Okay. Last time we derived the stiffness matrix for a 3D frame element, but of course it's the stiffness matrix is for the, the local coordinate system. Now the next question is, okay, how can we rotate that member's local coordinate system to the global coordinate system? So we can apply the same approach in the direct stiffness method method as we did in 2D, right? In 2D, we have a local stiffness matrix. We were calculating it, the rotation matrix, and convert the stiffness coefficients into global. Now, the question is, how do we do it in three dimensions? So let's try to figure that out. Rotation matrix. In 3D, OK? Uh, and in order to drive it, I will use the same approach. Now, let's define a local coordinate system in line with the global coordinate system. So let's say that this is our, my global X. That's global Y. And that's global Z. Now in that, let's define that's global, uh, sorry, local X prime. That will be local Y prime. And let's say that that will be local Z prime. Okay. And let's say that I have a member going in this direction. That's our member. That's the start node. That's the end node. And let's show that's the direction of that member. And let's show the forces. That's the axial force F1. Now we have F2, F3. They are all defined in local axis and we have also the rotations. So I have F4 here, F5 prime here and F6 prime here. So these are the forces in local coordinates. So this one is my global or structural coordinate axis. And this one is local coordinate axis. Okay. And if you want, you can show the forces in here too. Let's do that for completeness. So we have forces at both nodes. So this one is F9 prime, F10 prime. Sorry, I should erase that. It's not F. Yep, six, this should be F7. F8, F9 prime, F10 prime is the rotation, F11 prime and F12 prime. So what we want to do, we want to transform these forces like we do apply the transformation as we did before in two dimensions. And I want to convert, let's draw the member, I'll just draw the member right now. Everything in global coordinates. So F1 will be in global X, F2 will be in global Y, and F3 will be in global Z, and we have the other forces here. Let me just again draw down. These are the rotations. So we are, in that case, we have to rotate the rotations also. This is the four. 
f6, f7, 8, f9, So when we apply the transformation, these are the directions that we expected to see in our forces and our global system will look like this X, Y and Z. Let me redraw these things so that they are, we should understand that they are not the axial forces. They are the forces in the global Z direction. Okay, so this is the picture. Now I have six force components here in defined in the local directions and I want to convert them into global directions. Now in our previous case, we had only one rotation angle, but the story is a little bit different here. Let's try to see the rotation angles here. As the name implies, we have multiple rotation angles. So let's show them. The difficulty of explaining the rotation in three dimensions is we have too many things to show. Again, I will draw my global axis X, Y, Z. Now let's draw the local axis. This is X prime y prime and z prime okay and remember that at each case let's say that we i have these force components let me use a different color so i have a force component here in x direction force component i'll just show the force components okay the not the moments and then we will apply the same thing to the moments so let's say that that's f1 f2 and f3 so in order to calculate the component f1 in global x global y and global z directions i need the following I need this angle right this is the angle between theta x prime and global x i also need that angle that's the angle between x prime and global y so the theta x prime and global y plus i need this angle and that's the angle between x prime and z okay so in order for me to convert this force or calculate this forces components in global x y and z sorry global z directions i need three angles okay and you can repeat the same thing in order to calculate the components of f2 prime let's put the prime sorry for that Let's see which angles do I need. So I have to draw the figure one more time. That's global Y. Global X. And global Z. Now I have again X prime, Y prime. And z prime and let's again draw the forces so here i have f1 prime f2 prime and f3 prime okay now again i'll ask the same question what is the component of f2 in global x direction so i need that angle this is theta between y prime and x. I need that angle. That's theta y prime y. 
and I also need that angle theta y prime z and finally I'll ask the same question for f3 x y and z again let's draw the locals x prime y prime and z prime and here i have again f1 prime f2 prime f3 prime so this time i need this angle theta z prime x i need that angle theta z prime y and i need this angle theta z prime z okay so these are the angles all right now the next question sorry so i will reverse the question now let's say that i have a force component in here and i want to calculate this forces component at x prime direction y prime direction and z prime direction plus i have a force component here and i want to calculate its component in x direction y direction and z direction and so on so what should i do so let's see so f1 prime is equal to right f1 times f1 means a force in the global x direction times cosine of that angle cosine theta x prime x plus if i have a force in this direction and i want to calculate its component in the x prime that will be equal to f2 times cosine theta x prime y plus f3 again now we have a force in this direction and i want to calculate its component in this and that would be equal to times cosine theta x prime and z now if you continue do the same thing for the other directions we get the following f1 times cosine theta y prime x plus f2 times cosine theta y prime y plus f3 times cosine theta y prime z and for the third force component we have the following relationship f2 times cosine theta z prime x plus sorry this should be y let me raise that this is y time f3 times cosine theta z prime z and if i if we show it in matrix form we have the following relationship these are the force components in the local x in the local directions is equal to now we have the cosine ma matrix as follows Z 
z prime x cosine theta z prime y cosine theta z prime z multiplied by the forces in the global directions f1 f2 and f3 this matrix is called the direction cosine matrix and let's show it with the label r and if you think about it these are the angles the cosine of the angles between the local and the global axis this is the cosine of the angle between local x global x cosine of the angle between local x global y this one for example is the angle between local y and global y so we do one by one and we calculate the cosine of each axis with the global axis and we obtain the direction cosine angles once you have the direction cosine angle this actually will ha help you to transform any forces given in the global directions into forces in local coordinate system so we can write the following relationship is equal to r times f so these are the membrane forces in local and global coordinates this one is membrane forces in global and r r vector uppercase r will be equal to and we have all zeros here and this will be a 12 by 12 matrix so the first r will transform the forces at the start node the second r will transform the moments at the start node forces at the end node moments at the end node. so at the end of the day we have a 12 by 12 rotation matrix now let's put a note here that the rotation matrix r is a unit orthonormal matrix okay so when we say that we can write the following now this is what we drive a prime is equal to rotation matrix multiplied by f right this is the transformation equation from global to local it's the same as 2d and i had the following relationship f is equal to r transpose times f prime so that is transformation from local to global okay and if you want to transform the stiffness matrix k is equal to r transpose times the element stiffness matrix that we previously defined in the local coordinate system times r and that's equation for stiffness matrix transformation okay so these are the properties all right now when we write it this way everything looks fine but the main question here is how do we calculate this okay that's the i mean if you want to use this approach the question here is the main question how i can calculate the rotation matrix so let's ask this question so how do we calculate 
r right that's the question so what what we know we we know that our global coordinate system this is something that we know at the beginning of the analysis right we define it and then we have a member let's say that it goes from here to there we do the discretization and say that that's our start node that's the end node and what i know is the the start node coordinates this is usually what we know when we do an analysis and the end node coordinates okay so from that information right we can determine the coordinate of or the direction of the x prime so let's put it as a node we can calculate the direction cosines or the unit vector of x prime axis right so the angle between x prime and x will be xj minus xi divided by the length of the member likewise the angle between x prime and global y is equal to yj minus yi divided by l and x prime z is equal to zj zi divided by l so that's straightforward okay i can determine these and if you think about it i used all the information that i have at the beginning of the analysis so the question is what about about y prime sorry this should be local y prime and z prime how can i calculate the directions of y prime and z prime and let's take a member let me draw a member to you the section so let's say that i have this is the member that i have and we said that that we define this one as our x prime axis and since this is rectangle you can directly say that okay this should be the y prime this should be the z prime right but the question is how do we define it how do we describe it because i can have the same section located as follows in 3d space and it will have the same x prime axis okay it rolled a little bit this time my y prime and z prime will have a different directions compare these two this one has z prime and y prime as follows why did i choose the z prime and y prime like that because the bending along z prime will be the strong axis bending and the bending along y prime will be the minor axis bending now but my section or my member can be located like that in 3d space and again i want to use this is the strong axis bending and this is the minor axis bending right because i determine my moment of inertia according to this while determining the moment of inertia i just draw a rectangle i draw this is my z this is my y and this one i calculate the moment of inertia with respect to z-axis and i calculate the moment of inertia with respect to y-axis but if you think about it these both cases have the same direction cosines
for x prime axis okay and the other information that we have to mention is we said that while calculating the moment of inertia we use the the major axis and the minor axis right let's say that that's my major axis that's my minor axis this is the minor axis why did I call major and minor axis? Because in these directions, I, Z, Y, Z prime, Y prime is equal to zero. Okay. And by using these directions, I calculate I, Z prime and I, Y prime. So that's my reference axis okay i should start from major axis and minor axis definitions and by using starting from there i should define the orientation whether it's oriented that way or in this way in 3d space okay so how do i do that one option is to define a roll angle Okay, and let's show it with this symbol. And let's draw the what the roll angle means. So this is my rectangle. This is my major axis, Z prime. This is my minor axis y prime okay let's put a hat here so that i will have a differentiation so if let's say that this is y prime sorry z prime i will raise that this is y prime this is z prime and the rotation between the major axis to the current axis is defined by the phi which is called the roll angle okay so what does it mean how do we use it now let's say that if the structure is located like this in three dimensions our roll angle will be equal to zero we are saying that um, our global z is let's say that in line with the our local z is in line or the local y is in line with the global y so we have a, a roll angle definition for that and for this case now we have a different angle right the relationship between the global coordinates and the global yz coordinates is different than this one how do we define that difference by using the roll angle okay so every software when you use the software they will give you some assumptions related to the definition of this roll angle and with the help of this definition we can define the orientation of a member in 3d in its or differentiate between whether it's like this or like this by using this roll angle okay now we have the roll angle definition then what how am i how am i going to define my rotation angle by using the things i know the things I know is these three angles. I can calculate these three angles from the member coordinates. And the roll angle is a user input because the user has to tell me how my member is located in three dimension, whether it's like this or like that. And in that case, our rotation angle becomes this, theta x prime x i will not write the cosine when you see the theta it means that you'll understand that it's the cosine x prime y theta x prime z the first row is the same but the second row i have the following theta x prime x multiplied by theta x prime y minus
theta x prime z times sine of roll angle divided by theta x prime x squared plus theta x prime z squared. Now the second term is theta x prime x squared plus theta x prime z squared square root multiplied by cosine rho angle and the third component is minus theta x prime y theta x prime z cosine rho angle plus theta x prime x times sine rho angle divided by again theta x prime x squared plus theta x prime z squared so that's the second row it's a little bit long equations but let me write it for completeness and i will give the derivation how we obtain these matrices as a handout this is x prime x Second term is minus square root and the third parameter in this equation is x prime y x prime z sine of phi plus theta x prime x x cosine phi divided by square root of x prime x squared plus theta x prime z squared and with this new definition that will be our rotation matrix i know it's it looks complicated but the computers will do these calculations for us the only thing that we need to understand is the definition of roll angle so i will give a simple example now Assume that we have a column, a plan like this, right? And then uh, this is the grid line, the column grid line. In most of the softwares, if the columns local x-axis, you will have find these definitions in the software's user's manual this is the plan view. i'm looking at a plan from the top and these are my columns okay so as you see the columns major minor this is minor and the major axis is parallel to global x and y axis and most of the times when you do an input like this you define your roll angle as zero okay but when you want to define i'll draw the same plan but in that case let's say that this rectangular column is located like this this one is this way and let's say that this is located like that and this angle is theta and when we do that definition again let me draw the global x and global y This time the roll angle is defined as theta, for example. Here, in that case, roll angle is zero. And in that case, the roll angle is equal to minus theta. So how do we define the roll angle? 
what we, in what assumptions depends on the software implementation okay many softwares does that if one of the uh, major or minor axes are parallel to the global axis they act automatically by default define the roll angle as equal to zero and internally they do the calculations but if you have a situation like this you have to manually input the roll angle as this one or that one and so that you will direct the software to do the calculations to calculate the correct stiffness values in the global coordinate system so when we start discussing the modeling we will talk about that so at the end of the day in today's software that's the way we calculate the rotation matrix by using the membrane coordinates and by using the roll angle and with this formulation and then afterwards we do the following uh, calculation to transform everything into global coordinates do the calculations in global coordinates and once you obtain the results use these either this one or that one to recover the membrane forces.